Hi and hello everyone. Let us continue our discussion on queuing networks that what we have been doing so far. Uh, we have mainly defined, confined ourselves to Jackson network which means that you have a Poisson process arrival and you have exponentially distributed service time in each nodes that is what you know we are restricting to. And even in that the general Jackson network we have considered so far only up to open Jackson network. What we will do next uh, in our analysis of queuing networks is the closed Jackson network. Okay. So, what is a closed Jackson network? In a general Jackson network, if we restrict the conditions that you know there is no external arrivals which means all gamma is are equal to 0 and there is no departure from the system which makes it as r i 0 equal to 0 for all i which means no customer can leave from any node. Then that particular Jackson network with these two conditions is what is called as a closed Jackson network. Another commonly used terminology for such a network is garden naval network because these are the people who have actually like worked on this closed network concepts basically from the framework within that is Jackson network thing, but in a closed network uh, uh, scenario. So, that is why in many books it will be simply referred to as a garden naval network that means that it is basically a closed Jackson network. Okay. Uh, we have already mentioned that uh, in our earlier lecture that a simple example of a closed queuing network is our the classical finite source queuing model or machine repairment model which is a closed network with two nodes uh, one representing the operating machines and the other is repair facility and there are total number of machines uh, that is what is what we call it as customer which is circulating within these two nodes uh, they will be either here in operating condition or in the repair facility. Right. So, so, this particular thing is a very simple example of a closed queuing network. So, here uh, what we have is for i is equal to 1 to j 0 1 2 in the general Jackson network framework. If I take r 1 2 and r 2 1 is equal to 1 and all other r i j s are equal to 0, then what you get is basically the, the, the version we can write it down this finite source queuing model as if it is a closed queuing network with these parameters. Right. So, that is uh, a typical a simple example of a closed queuing network. Of course, it also has you know many other applications in uh, manufacturing production system or in multi programming uh, systems or networks. Right. So, basically what you have here in a closed network because there is no external arrival and also there are no customers who leave from the network to outside world. So, there is a fixed number of customers who circulate uh, between the different nodes continuously from moving from one node to the other and getting routed from one node to the other depending upon what is the routing uh, scheme that we have okay. and no new customers arrives and also no customers leave the system this is single class is what typically we might assume. Suppose, if it is a multiple class then we define while def de defining the closed queuing network itself that if the network is closed then it has to be closed for all classes in the network. It is not just that if one class is closed for another class is open I mean class means for one class of customers the network acts as if it is a closed queuing network in the other for other particular class then if it acts as if it is a open then it is really a mixed queuing network is what then you would have. Okay. But here closed means if you have multiple classes then it means that for all the classes the network is closed. So, such a network as we are seeing is basically equivalent to a finite core source queuing system with n items and the items continuously travel inside the network. Anyway, maybe when we see one or two examples you will understand more, but a typical simple example is there in front of you which is the machine repairment problem. Okay. So, what you have now? 
is basically we have now a setup for a closed junction network which is as follows right so we have k service nodes service rates are exponential distributed a service uh, time it node i is with rate mu i and there are c i servers in each node right routing probability is r i j but now i and j is between 1 and k because r i 0 that extra thing that we had in case of uh, open network is no longer applicable here so you have r i j's so they will sum you know they will i mean for each j r i's would be sum if i sum over all j of uh, r i j then that must be equal to 1 that's what you will get here whereas that need not be the case in the open network because there is an additional node which we call it as external node which is 0. So, R i 0 it may be some non-negative quantity okay. strictly positive quantity that is also possible. Again we assume that these R i j's are independent of the system state and in total there are n customers in the system in the network or in the system. Okay no new customers arrive and no customer departs and again no limit on q capacity at any node if there is then again you know all these blocking issues will come but anyway we are not going to look at that but that is possible that you can easily extend these ideas to such scenario as well but again the complexity similarly will be increasing so we have now a markovian system as earlier and the state of the system can be described like in a open network case by the random variables n i s where n i is the number of customers in the node i in steady state. But here you note that n 1 plus n 2 plus n k if you sum all these uh, quantities which are basically random variables then they must be equal to n which is the total number of customers in the network. Remember there is a fixed number of uh, customers who move from one node to the other as per the routing situation and then they will be somewhere there in the system right. So, that means n must be there somewhere. So, this sum of all these n k's would then correspond to the, the quantity n that is what you have here. So, this is you know exactly the same diagram like what we had it for an open network. What you do not have is as you might see there is no external arrival here right and there is no departure from here and so on. So, it is exactly same like the previous network diagram there is no change I have made. I have made only thing changes that the external arrivals departures I have removed. So, it becomes a closed queuing network right. So, now there are some number of customers. So, there may be you can assume that there are total of n customers right. So, there could be total of n customers in the network. So, they will be moving along this different networks there are k nodes are there in this network right. So, they will move from as per the routing thing that you have. Now, only thing you have to notice is that the sum of r 1 1 r 1 2 r 1 3 epsilon r 1 k this sum will be equal to 1. So, this will be a the routing matrix for a closed queuing network is a proper stochastic matrix. Now, if I give you a routing matrix and if I can ask whether this routing matrix can be corresponding to uh, you know an open network or queuing net a uh, closed network. In case of open at least one node should be leaving out right. So, that means there is at least one row which is not summing to one. In case of closed network that cannot happen all the rows must be equal to one. So, that is what you know you could think of it as a property of routing matrix as well anyway. So, so this is what is a typical closed queuing network that you have here that you know there are customers who move from node 1 to node 2 right or node 3 or node k and from node k they move to node 2 and from node 3 they move to you know node where, wherever it is okay it is I think node 3 from node 2 it is coming and so on. So, this is what is a typical uh, closed queuing network that you can visualize right. So, it is exactly same as open no external arrivals no departures that is it 
Okay. So, as usual what is our interest? We would want this to compute this probability, the joint distribution of this n1 to nk, but you have to keep in mind that the sum of all these random variables n1 to nk is equals to n capital N, the number of customers in the network. So, that is this quantity is what we want okay, from which we can obtain other quantities of interest whatever we wanted. Okay. So, the notation now like the open network the procedure is similar. So, we will call this uh, you know k tuple as n bar by the simplified notation and the ith element is plus 1 and the jth element is mi minus 1 it will be denoted by as earlier here n bar i plus j minus means ith element is plus 1 and jth element is minus 1. Assume for now like in the earlier case that uh, our c i equal to 1 now here. Okay. So, that is a single server at each node is what we are assuming again for simplicity and ease of understanding. So, the balance equations now if you recall the previous balance equation that we have written for open network it is exactly same except that if you put that gamma i equal to 0 and r i 0 equal to 0 you will basically end up with this. Okay. So, remember like what can happen here right. So, this is you know rate of going out from n bar and this is from which rate of going inside in. So, n bar with ith element plus 1, jth element minus 1 and its service completes at ith node and with probability r ij it will move to node j. So, this whole thing then will become n bar right. Now, it is all, all possibilities of you know i 1 to k and j. this is flow in, flow out is basically this other right mu i i r i i is basically the feedback the immediate feedback probability or immediate routing probability. So, 1 minus r i i is it will go to some other node not the same node. So, mu i it is completing service then it is what. So, this is basically the rate of flow out. So, this must be true for all i from so that is the case right. So, exactly same like in the earlier case, much very simpler version of the flow balance equation is what you have here. Now, again you know we have not we have assumed this n i greater than equal to 0 for boundary case again appropriate you know quantities like we will not be there and one can write down the balance equations. Okay. So, that is what you have the stochastic balance equations. Now, since this network is a special case of a general Jackson network, we still have the product form solution. Remember, for us the product form solution means it is of this form, okay. not necessary that the joint distribution factors into product of the marginal distribution, but you know it is of this form that it is some constant times product of functions of n i's that is what you know we have we have called it. So, that is what satisfies this where rho i is as usual lambda i by mu i this must satisfy the balance equation for flow at each node. So, that the flows into and out of node i are equal. Okay. So, now the traffic equations if I plug in that uh, quantities are gamma i equal to 0, r i 0 equal to 0, then this will actually become lambda i equals this quantity, right. Forget about this in the middle, but lambda i equal to this is what your traffic equations becomes, but my lambda i the way we are defined is basically mu i rho i and again lambda j is then mu j rho j. So, this can be written in this form. So, either you can write it in terms of lambda i equal to this in terms of lambda or in terms of rho if you want that is a convenient for us as you would see then you will write this flow balance equation as mu i rho i equals summation j is equal to 1 to k of mu j or j i times rho j right. So, so that is uh, what then you will see as the balance equation. Okay. 
as I, as earlier like we assume that this matrix is irreducible and non absorbing because no node is completely absorbing anyway it does not have then of course the network there is nothing like to study everything after some time in steady state mean it will be absorbed into that particular state or uh, node ok. So, to avoid the triviality like we will assume that this is non absorbing, but now we know that the total sum is n and total number of customers is n right. So, one of the traffic equations out of this k equations in this set because this is not a linearly independent system of a set of equation, so one of them is redundant because your you know, total arrival rates is fixed in a way. Okay. So, what one can do is that we can set one of these row i's will be equal to 1 and you can solve for the remaining one this will get adjusted in the normalization constant. So, that will take care of this there is not nothing to worry. So, one can set because of the linear dependent uh, system you can set one of them equal to 1 and solve this system of equations to get the solution ok. Now, we said that this is what is the solution and this is uh, also like in the open network case it is called as Jackson's theorem which gave that this as the result or the solution of the stochastic flow balance equations, but here this is also called as garden naval theorem because they only showed that again this, this form is of again the same form in this particular case. Okay. So, what can access show that this particular thing that we have written which is p n bar is some constant times rho 1 to the power n 1 and rho 2 to the power n 2 and so on rho, rho k to the power n k the product. So, this is what we really call as a product form solution and this satisfies the balance equation and you can so much like the earlier case there is not much difficulty here ok. But in open Jackson network we also saw that this c also can be written as a product of terms product of 1 minus rho i's is what then we wrote and hence this whole thing actually broke it into product of marginals, but here in case of closed network c is not a product of terms and it must be then computed from this normalization condition usual normalization condition only, but now what is the condition that this n 1 plus n 2 plus up to n k if I sum it up that must be equal to n. So, subject to that condition if I evaluate this equation from this equation I can obtain C then that C would be then equal to this quantity times inverse which we call it simply as C of n. Uh, we are writing it C of n to denote the uh, to emphasize the fact that you know it is a function of the number of customers in the network. Now, but uh, more often C 1 is C n is not uh, being used here in while writing the solution it is often the function g of n which is basically this C inverse of n or what you know that is what is written or 1 over of that actually right 1 over of that C of n is what is called it as g of n it is normally written as uh, this g of n and therefore, the solution right can be written here instead of this c now you get 1 over g of n because c of n is that c. So, 1 over c of n is what is basically g of n. So, we write it as g of n in this particular case and g of n is what is called as the normalization constant. We are giving a name specific because the crux of the problem or the emphasis major problem in uh, while dealing with closed networks is connected with this g of n. So, we want to specifically call it give a name which is what is called with the normalization constant in the case of a closed key network is what is g of n which as you know because this is 1 over c of n is this quantity. So, g of n is basically this quantity here which is in case of this single server at each node network closed queuing network that is what you have. So, in this garden naval network so that is also g here this sum where the sum is taken over all possible n 1 to n k such that they sum to capital N is what will give you the normalization condition ok. Here 
as we just said that the this one will not fact is not factoring into product of terms involving ni's or rows whatever and hence uh, here the joint distribution is not the product of marginal so that is why we wanted to have a relaxed or less re restrictive definition of product form network so that we can call this also as a product form network the dealing is almost similar so that's what rather than a more restrictive definition where we want the product form network means product of marginals but we do not insist here so that's thing that you can keep in mind so that's what is this a solution so this is what no complete solution p the joint distribution of this is given by this now once i have this then i can get other quantities connected with this network suppose if i want uh, say the what is the probability that the node one is empty or some number of nodes are empty or the whole whole network is empty in terms are certain probabilities right what is the probability that at any node the number of customers is more than 10 when total number of customers in the network is say 100 and so on like anything probability expected measures or anything that you know you normally interested to get you can get from this joint distribution as we have done earlier in this particular case so there is nothing peculiar about that okay so our main interest was to obtain this and we have obtained for all n1 n2 nk greater than or equal to 0 such that the sum to n is what is the the scope or the space for the support for this n dimensional random variable okay now we have assumed that single server case here but exactly like what we have done in open network case this single channel at each node concept can be generalized or extended to some ci servers at each node then again you will have exactly the same product where rho i to the power n i by a i of n i where this a i of n i is either n i factorial for n i less than c i or c i factorial times c i to the power n i minus c i for n i greater than or equal to c i and g n would be the sum of this over all such n1 n2 nk such that they sum to 1 is what will give you the normalization constant so this extension to ci server i mean if you want to directly write this uh, uh, ci server case in the general uh, the balance equation will be little complex and other things will be little complex for understanding i think we can start with single server but it is very much true it exactly similar thing only only thing is this expression varies that's all then everything holds true for ci servers at node i that's what you know we are writing it here so for ci and again this comes from your mmc model right so that p0 factor the normalization alone we don't do but otherwise this factors coming from this mmc model that what you have there like in the earlier case right so this multi server case one can easily handle that's what you are seeing it here okay now let us look at uh, examples let us consider this uh, two node network node 1 and node 2 and there is a single server at each node right and this node or uh, the service time here is exponential with parameter mu 1 and at node 2 the service time is exponential with parameter mu 2 and this is a closed queuing network and there are total of m customers in the network there are totally m customers in the network so some number of customers would be there in this node right so maybe with the server as well as a queuing and some number of customers will be there in this node maybe with the server and also at queue and after completing the service at node 1 okay it can come back to node 1 again which means immediate feedback with the probability of q okay with probability of q or with probability of 1 minus q this will move to node 2 to, to get service in node 2 right that's what happens after service uh, uh, service completion at node 1 and after service completion at node 
2 it can come back to node 2 again immediately with probability p means he will join at the uh, tail end right. So, it is basically FCFS is what we have in mind even for this situation or with the probability 1 minus p it can you know come to node 1 with probability 1 minus p. So, in both the nodes there is a immediate feedback with probability q for node 1 and p for node 2 or with probability 1 minus q and 1 minus p it will move to the following node. Okay. You can think about this in the circle fashion as well. So, there are only two nodes very simple setup network. You have infinite capacity here, you have infinite capacity here for queuing okay. exponential servers this is what you have here. right? So, what is our interest? The steady state joint probability distribution is what we want to compute. So, in this particular case since we are assuming the total number there are m customers here. So, the first one I can think as if it is m minus m and the second one uh, second number of customers in node 2 as small m. right? So, m minus m and m I can think of it as, a, as if instead of n 1 and n 2 because there is only 2. So, I can easily look at it this way. Then the distribution will be given by 1 by g of m rho 1 to the power m minus m single server each node. So, it is basically rho 1 will come here and rho 2 to the power m for m is equal to 0, 1, 2 up to m. right? Because that is what pretty much you would have had if you had had to write this expression. right? So, rho 1 to the power n 1, rho 2 to the power n 2 such that n 1 plus n 2 equal to n and n 1, n 2 both will be between 0 and m. That is it is very easy like in case of 2 to write it in this fashion. right? Okay. So, what we have to now find? We have to find this rho 1, rho 2. So, we have to find this rho 1, rho 2 right, uh, from this set of equation which is what we wrote it as the traffic equation in this particular case. Now, since we know that this is dependent equations system, right? we have to solve it by setting one of them as some value and then set solve for the remaining one. Whatever be up to a constant this will give you. So, the normalization uh, this term will take care of the, the required constant here. So, the routing matrix R in this particular case is basically from node 1 it will go to node 2 with probability 1 minus q or it will come back to node 1 with probability q and from node 2 it will it will be remain it will come back to node 2 itself with probability p or it will go to node 1 with probability 1 minus p this, this is the routing matrix. Now, with this r r j i's or r i j's like if you write this equation then this equation becomes this form right mu 1 rho 1 is equal to mu 1 times q rho 1 plus mu 2 times 1 minus p rho 2 and similarly for the other one you will do the second column will give you this equation. As these are linearly dependent equation we can set one of the rows 0 and solve for the other we will take rho 1 equal to 1. So, the second equation will give you rho 2 which is simply like you just substitute rho 1 equal to 1. So, then this you take it to the other side and rho 2 will give you 1 minus q by 1 minus p times mu 1 by mu 2 is what then you are seeing it here. right? So, that is the reason why you know we set rho 1 equal to 1 so that you know these things you can eliminate totally now. So, if I write with this solution of rho 1 and rho 2 this term will completely go off I will end up with only rho 2 where rho 2 is given by this expression. Okay. So, we thus have the steady state solution as 1 by g m g of m of rho 2 to the power m. right? So, with where this is equal to this is what is rho 2 that we have here. Now, what with normalization condition? The normalization condition would be simply this quantity. right? So, that is what uh, you know we have seen here the normalization condition here. So, that is what is the normalization condition is this quantity which is basically 1 minus rho 2 to the power m plus 1 by 1 minus rho 2. Here in this particular case you can explicitly obtain this quantities very nicely right that is what you are seeing it here right. So, this is what is the g m. So, you obtain now g m rho 2 to the power m of course, we want to plug in rho 2 this value then everything will be in terms of the model parameters mu 1 mu 2 p q 
right. Now, once I have this, then I can think of various performance measures that can be obtained with respect to this particular example. Say for example, if I am interested that probability that the node 1 is busy, right, which means node 1 has at least 1, which means that I want to sum of all p m minus n m, where m minus m is at least 1, right. So, that means this is equal to 1 minus p 0 m. So, p 0 m, p 0 m this is what I will have. So, that is equal to this quantity. Now, you can see that you know g this is if you just substitute for g m equal to this expression, then you can easily see that this probability is basically g of m minus 1 divided by g of m. right? The reason why you know we are writing it in this in terms of G is that you know you see this G is playing a critical role in the analysis of closed queuing network and here you see certain performance measures, certain performance measures not may not be all of them can also be expressed mainly using this function G. Okay. You see here node 1 is busy in this example it so happens that it is it is g of m minus 1 by g of m is what you are obtaining. Similarly, if you want to compute the probability that the node 2 is busy, right, node 2 is busy that means this quantity here which is 1 minus 1 by g m because a probability of m 0 is simply 1 by g m. So, this is rho 2 times g of m minus 1 by g of m as you can obtain it easily. So, again here also this is rho 2 appearing, but still you, you still have appearing uh, this g function also with respect to the, the normalization condition also appears here. Okay. Now, once I have this, right, I, I have now here in a much simpler form of the joint distribution itself. right. So, I can obtain the average number of customers in node 2 and node 1. For example, first at node 2 I can look at it. If I look at it, it is basically I need to this is the distribution right I need to obtain this for node 2 right. So, then that will be equal to this quantity this. Now, this kind of quantities even when in the MMCK model when we have obtained we have obtained this and you can simply see that okay, this is basically derivative of summation of rho 2 to the power m right d, d by d rho 2 of the summation of rho 2 to the power m is what will give you this expression and that is basically uh, you know something some, something similar to this right this is what exactly the derivative of this is what is you know you are obtaining it here ok. So, so that is basically de derivative of this if you plug it in then you will arrive at this expression. So, once I have this as the expression for L 2 now my L 1 will be simply m minus L 2 because the total number of customers is m in the whole of network and in node 2 if I have L 2 as the number in the system then in node 1 I will have L 1 as the number in the system right. So, this is L 1 L 2 likewise you know because the mean performance measures you can see and then you can obtain and with uh, all those things like you know one can obtain other performance measures. But point here to notice in a two node network like this there may be some simplifications simplified version that you will be able to arrive which can directly gives rise to some nice expressions for certain performance measures that you may look for because here g m g of m is itself coming out to be in a nice form in an explicit form ok. Otherwise the problem mainly lies with this g m of g of m is what is the in the closed queuing network. So, in this particular case it turns out that it is not that easy you can obtain it very easily and certain performance measures also another point that you notice certain performance measures are also can be written in terms of g of g. Of course, g will appear in term in I mean in the joint distribution, but you know in terms of the performance measures directly in terms of this to express that is also such a nice things to have in, in many cases. Okay. So, this is one example that we are seeing. Okay. Uh, we will continue with uh, more in the next lecture. Okay. Thank you. Bye.